So welcome. We're all coming in from different locations and different places and different head spaces, depending on uh, what's happened for you this morning or this week. So I just want to welcome you all in wherever you are uh, to the Creative Alchemy Cycle Workshop. Welcome, Gretchen. Welcome, welcome. So I am on two screens today. I'm here where you can see me speaking, and I'm also here where it says Sarah's hands. <laughs> so those are my two screens. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Zoom, if you'd like to see what I'm doing with my hands or my face bigger, you can just roll your cursor over the top right hand side. There's a little three dot thing that shows up and you can click pin video and that will allow you to see it larger if that's what you wish. You can also in the view area have gallery view or speaker view. Um, so that's just a little housekeeping before we begin. And off and on, I just want to let you know today I'll be reading from a script just because I want to honor your time and ensure that we um, get to everything we want to get to and, and that we've planned for our experience today. I read because I care. <laughs> that's what I tell folks. Um, since this is my first time meeting many of you, I just want to share a, a little tiny bit about myself. I'm Sarah Greenman and my pronouns are she, they. And I'm a creative alchemist, an artist, playwright, journaler, sketchbook keeper, cultural worker, community organizer. And I sort of think of myself as an archaeologist of the soul. What this means is that I'm an intuitive contractor tapping on the walls of our lived experience to find weight bearing beams of truth that we can build our own work on. And that's how I write and that's how I paint and that's how I parent and that's how I garden. And so it sort of goes into everything that I do. I'm definitely a, a process junkie or a practical optimist, an eco-spiritualist or a creative midwife. I definitely think of myself in, uh, myself in those terms. And I always open any of our creative alchemy cycle calls with a poem. Uh, Parker Palmer is a teacher and he says that opening up with a poem means that we take it out of our own selves and we hand it to somebody else to reflect back to us. And it's nice to have that third party in the room. So this is a poem by Dana Fowles called Just For Now. And I will always put my sources in the chat and then always I have a follow up email that has all of those resources and sources that I've used during my calls. So just for now by Dana Fowles. I'll go ahead and put that in the chat here. There's the chat. And again, I will send this to you afterwards as well. Dana writes, just for now, without asking how, let yourself sink into stillness. Just for now, lay down the weight you so patiently bear upon your shoulders. Feel the earth receive you and the infinite expanse of the sky grow even wider as your awareness reaches up to meet it. Just for now, allow a wave of breath to enliven your experience. Breathe out whatever blocks you from the truth. Just for now, be boundless, free, with awakened energy tingling in our hands and in our feet. Drink in the possibility of being who and what you really are, so fully alive that the world looks different newly born and vibrant, just for now. I love that poem by her. So just for now, welcome to this space. We are who we are just for now and in just this moment and just for the next hour and a half together. I also start all of my uh, gatherings with a land acknowledgement to honor the land that I live on. Um, and I encourage you all to do the same. And my work is created through a justice lens. And my goal is always right relationship. And since collaboration is definitely my medicine and collective liberation is definitely my purpose, this is an important part of my process which is always ongoing and in a state of inquiry. And to that end, I just want to name out loud that I'm not a perfect vessel for this work. I'm definitely a fellow traveler with you. <laughs> I am on this journey with everyone participating in the creative alchemy cycle. And I mess up sometimes. And so my commitment to you is that I will always show up whole in this space and practice accountability in real time with you. And my tools to accomplish this are simple, but really potent stories, art, and nature. So I'm coming to you today from Halfway, Oregon, which is situated in the Wallowa-Whitman mountain range uh, in the far northeastern part of the state. 
And as an artist dedicated to land stewardship and right relationship, I want to fully recognize the original people who thrived here before being forcibly removed. And these are members of the Nimipu, which are sometimes called Nez Perce, Umatilla, Cayuse, and Walla Walla tribes, which made their home here along the Snake River and along the Eagle Cap wilderness. Uh, I would like to also share with you an organization uh, that I contribute to monthly as part of being in right relationship with uh, this community around me. And uh, I want to honor the wealth of knowledge that came from these folks and to unlearn also the devastating tools of their colonizers from which I descend. So this is my way of being in right relationship with them and practicing reparations. And that's Nimapu Protecting the Environment. They're a fantastic group here in our area. If you know the native lands of the people from uh, on which you stand um, in the areas that you live, uh, feel free to type them into the chat. And I'm also going to give you um, a link here to nativeland.ca, and this can help you find out if you don't know. So that's just a little tool for you as you do land acknowledgments yourself. So what to expect with our time together? Like I said, I always do a poem and a land acknowledgment. Oh, thank you. Wonderful. All these beautiful places you all come from. Uh, so we are going to uh, dive into a, a, a card reading. I, I'm a card reader. It's kind of woo woo. So just roll with me on this one. I promise it's going to be good. <laughs> but I have something called the Creative Alchemy Oracle deck that I've created. And so I'm going to do a short card reading and we'll use that as like a warm up prompt for um, writing or sketching. And then we're gonna do a second writing exercise or sketch exercise where we're gonna use some of our own cultural background as a way of making meaning and storytelling. And then we are going to share in circle form. And that's where if you are so moved, you can share some of your writing. It's not required, but it's always such a lovely part of building community, I think, is to share. And then we will transition and we'll take a look at a creative alchemy bundle. We're gonna look at the um, summer solstice bundle and I'm gonna share a care package with you in real time here. And then we'll just have a Q and A and close the circle. So that's gonna be our time together today. Any questions about that before I go on? Awesome, anytime you wanna unmute yourself and be like, hey, this is definitely a conversation. So please feel free to just jump in whenever you like. So I would like, to invite you to begin to unhook from all the thoughts and feelings that you've carried in from other spaces today. I know that's a hard thing to do, but I would like to warm up with an oracle card reading and a free writing prompt. And I'll talk a little bit more about what I mean by free my writing in a minute. So you can see my hands are over here. I've got three cards and each of the cards has a stone with it. The first right here that I'm holding with my fingers is a rose quartz. And the rose quartz is um, for love, compassion, empathy, trust. It's your heart centered stone. The second one I have here is amethyst. And this is a grounding, more tranquil, sort of calm stone. And that's about your sacrum, right? Your base, your foundation. And then here I have fluorite, this third stone. And this is for mind or concentration or self confidence or decision making. So I really have your core sacrum, I have your heart center or your mind center represented in these three stones. And I would like you to just think where you're at today as you think about like, what am I needing? Is it something that's more head centered about concentration and about your your mental space? Is it more heart centered? Are you feeling like, oh, love, I need some love in my life? <laughs> or is it more um, foundational, sort of sacral, pelvic, something that is about holding you up? And I want you to just think in your mind's eye, okay, I'm really resonating with one of these three stones, because I'm going to pull a card and read each of us. Now, I will say, because I'm a big fan of changing your mind, that's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> that if you hear something from a stone you didn't pick, it's probably yours <laughs> that you just resonate with. So you can, you can pick whichever you like. But I like to start by thinking about where we are, head, heart, sacrum. So here come the readings. So for those of you who picked rose quartz, this is, oh, magic and mistakes. This <laughs> Thelma is doing her cheer <laughs> over there. Magic in Mistakes. This comes from a painting called Collapsing Star. 
and it's two women who are dancing and one of them is in a beautiful sort of form that's perfect balletic arms are perfect she's up on her toes she really has her shit together <laughs> and then the other is falling the other is falling beautifully but she is not she does not have her feet on the ground but she is still in this incredible sort of state of free fall and I love that um, their hands are kind of touching like the sort of finger of God moment, right? I'm sort of referencing Michelangelo there, that there is a kind of harmony when we have chaos and we also have control. And isn't that what's happening right now for all of us? So for those of you who have picked something that's more heart centered and that rose quartz, this tells me that there is chaos and control in your heart right now, that there are things that you have a handle on and there are things you don't, and that that is actually part of the beauty of being alive, frankly. <laughs> and I love that it's called Collapsing Star because it's something that has emitted a bunch of light for a very long time, and now it's imploding on itself and becoming something new. These are Those are sort of threshold moments when new worlds can be created. So I think it's a really catalytic and creative time for your heart right now. Ooh, magic and mistakes for our rose quartzers. Okay, for those of you who picked the amethyst who are looking for something more sacral and sort of grounding, only you can bring forth this vision. This is the goddess Hera, and in Greek mythology, she's the goddess of birthing women and creativity as well. She's very pregnant, but she's also super regal. So I love that this is um, a woman in a state of expectancy. Something is coming. And um, <laughs> it's interesting that it came with the amethyst because it's this very pelvic kind of thing, right? Birthing something. This doesn't necessarily mean children, of course, birthing an idea, birthing a concept, um, birthing um, a relationship, starting something new. We really, again, like, the mis magic and mistakes. We don't have a lot of control over what's coming. All our, our only job is to bring it forth into the world. And so if you are looking for a strong foundation to stand on right now, please know that what you are attempting to do is holy work and that you are also in threshold space, bringing forth something really beautiful into the world. Also, if you'll notice on, um, let's see, her throat, there's a blue dot. I always have blue dots on my paintings in the throat of women who are attempting to speak truth. And so this is definitely um, a truth speaking moment. If you've been waiting to say something, maybe this is your sign. <laughs> so for those of you who picked the uh, fluorite, this again is your headspace, mental clarity, decision making, mental focus. This is the card, honor your momentum. I'll bring it up a little closer here. Um, oh, where is it? There it is. Honor your momentum. It says, go, go, go. Um, for those of you who don't know, I have a child who is non-ambulatory much of the time and in a wheelchair. His name is Charlie and I write a lot about him. And as his parents, we really have to honor whatever place he's at. And he can only do one thing first before he can do the other. And so for me, this is a great reminder that um, multitasking isn't real <laughs> and you can only do one thing at a time. And before you put your feet on the ground, you have to bear weight through your bones. And before you actually stand up, you need to kind of understand weight balance. And before you take a step, you need to understand how weight transfers through the center. So it's really one thing after the other here. This is also um, for me always a sign to slow down so if you're going fast right now, mentally, busy, lots of things happening up here, maybe honor your real momentum. What does your inner metronome say right now? So for our quick warm up, let's take like four minutes or let's take five, let's take five minutes and free write uh, a little bit about the card you picked either beforehand or the card you resonated with after. Again, I'm a famous mind changer. So um, free writing, if you don't know, is um, a writing strategy that was developed by Peter Elbow back in the 70s. Um, 
when I was born back in the 70s. And it's similar to brainstorming, but it's it's written in sentence and paragraph form without stopping. It's just a form of getting the ideas down. And it's not the time to judge what you're writing. Uh, I use free writing a lot because it increases the flow of ideas for me, but also it reduces the chance that I'll accidentally censor a good idea. <laughs> so let's take five minutes. I'm gonna play a little bit of music and we're just going to write about one or two or three, again, whatever feels right to you, uh, write about the card. We have magic and mistakes, only you can bring forth this vision or honor your momentum. And I'll put those in the chat as well. We'll start right now. Any questions? Good deal. Wrong one. <laughs>
right? Find a nice stopping spot there. Just complete that last sentence. Good deal. Welcome back. Ooh, after I write for a minute, I like to just shake it out. So if you need to like stretch or arms up or roll your shoulders or readjust your sits bones, which I do frequently, feel free. <sighs> so you can just unmute yourselves if you like. How was that? How was that experience being um, sort of having your cards read and then writing for a moment about that? Any thoughts that came up or anything that resonated with you that you wrote or... Oh, Callie asks, what was that beautiful music? It's from Cello Yoga, and it was the song called Flow. Please do feel free to just unmute yourselves if there was something you want to share with the group. And do please introduce yourselves. Give us um, your name. And if you like, please do share your pronouns as well. I can share. Great. Um, I'm Shelly Landers. She, they. Um... I felt like I haven't checked in in a while. <laughs> uh, and so this was a good reminder of how to do that and a, a beautiful reminder of how helpful that can be. Mm. So the process of getting it on paper uh, takes it out of me and lets me put it aside and also inspect it later, now, later, whenever, not. Uh, so that was very helpful. Thank you so much for sharing, Shelly. Welcome. So good to meet you. Other thoughts? Yeah, Erin, please. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Okay, thank you so much. Um, we're kind of in a cabin up in the woods, and so we're tucked away, and sometimes our connections up here get a little bit fuzzy. Um, I chose fluorite, um, which is actually a new space for me. I tend to function very much from my sacral zone, just um, pulled by creativity in every which way, but my family is getting ready to transition back into um, real life school coming up here very, very soon. And uh, we did virtual school for my one child last year and skipped the second year of preschool for my other child um, just to, to play things a little safer. And so I'm, I'm definitely all up in my head right now trying to wrap myself around um, packing up and leaving this place and then getting regrounded back in our regular digs and then getting our children out into the world again. And it's just, it's a lot to, I think, wrestle with. And I think that I am allowing myself to get caught up in the momentum of it as a distraction. Mm. And it, um, and so I'm, I'm using, instead of really feeling through what that is experience is like and savoring these last moments that I'm going to have with my kids of this freedom, I'm letting myself get kind of uh, dragged away with the current of what's coming down the pipeline. And so that was, that card was a perfect reminder for me to just slow down and be where I'm at. And I have a question for you. So thank you for that. It was perfect. Um, I, I run women's circles and I loved what you did with the three, with the three, um, chakra centers and with the crystals. And would you mind if I riffed on that in my own circle space? Please do, because I forgot to mention, I'm riffing on somebody else and their name is Chris Corsini. And Chris Corsini is a Portuguese um, American Sign Language interpreter and uh, also astrologist. And they do readings like this where they um, have public spaces where they hold lots of people to read and they do it with stones. And I just love what they did and so I, this is my own version of that so you're welcome to please Thank you. my mom Thank always you. says a good idea doesn't care who had it just name your sources you know just name your sources I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> absolutely please name chris corsini though that's who it came from right. will you type that her her proper spelling yeah. and that into the chat so i can reference absolutely. her absolutely absolutely thank you
There we go. Awesome. Wink. Any other thoughts before we move on to the next section? I'm happy to hear from more of you too. If you, yes, Callie, if you'll please step into the circle. Well, Erin, it's interesting because my usual place is in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could get down there. <laughs> um, right, so I picked momentum, that, that one, the mental one. Uh, right now, my momentum is at a snail's pace, I wrote. Maybe even going backwards, I'm not sure. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I uh, and and the other cards. Well, I pulled one for myself. It was it. I pulled the make something new card. I love it. And so I'm like, oh, make something new. Only I can bring forth the vision. It's like, uh, no, I can't do anything right now. Um. So I. I, uh, it's energy I need right now. <laughs> oh, I mean, I hear you naming a kind of stuckness, which happens, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's so interesting. I used to work as a, um, that you mentioned that, because I used to work as a midwife's assistant. And frequently, when we get to the point of a baby being delivered into the world, and you've pulled two pregnancy cards that make something new, and um, this bring forth this vision are both pregnant yeah. women in the deck. Um, two of only three. So that's interesting. But um, when we would get to a point where um, they were about to deliver and the baby was just not coming, we noticed sometimes there's something called shoulder dystocia, where the shoulder would get stuck behind the pelvic bone of the, de the deliverant. Mm -hmm. And we would have to literally just find a new position. They'd have to just get up out of bed and get on their hands and knees or move their body or dance or sway in some way to open up the the pelvis and we have to sometimes just get up from where we're at move to a different location see something different uh, let our body be in a new place for us to actually do the dang thing <laughs> just to deliver yeah. you know to deliver it or to um, move forward so i always think about stuckness creatively as like shoulder dystocia like my shoulder is stuck <laughs> behind the pelvis i can't get out so it's like how about we just dance it out so sometimes it's just moving our bodies <laughs> yeah thank you thank you callie for sharing thank you all for sharing oh so much. and i'm on the chumash lands and oh, i'm she her, her. yeah <laughs> Thank you so much. Elizabeth, is it okay? I'm going to move forward since we're at about the half hour mark. Is that okay? Right, never mind. Or do you never have mind. something you would, if you'd love to share, please do. I'm just thinking like maybe a, a minute. One of the first things I wrote when I started, when I realized I was supposed to be a writer was pregnant with poems. When will I deliver? So ah. for me, of course, the the second card and I've delivered and delivered and delivered and right now I'm uh, um, trying to deliver a reincarnation of the first book I wrote but I've collaborated collaboration requires patience I guess yeah. because your collaborator isn't always ready when you are wow. so kind of stuck uh, my collaborator is selling her house. Go figure. Wow. That's a tall <laughs> order. Anyway, I, I just thought, oh, well, I have to share this because that's one of the first phrases I wrote. I love that. Pregnant with poems. When will I deliver? When will I deliver? Beautiful, beautiful. And, and um, I'm, I live on the Chumash land and my pronouns are she, her, they, she, her. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elizabeth. You're welcome. I we'll appreciate that. Pregnant, pregnant. What a time to be pregnant with ideas. It sounds like you're um, surrounded by many children, though, many of your children ideas. So that's a good place to be, too. So for this next yeah. piece yeah. of the puzzle, um, I'm really interested with the creative alchemy cycle in excavating not only our relationship with nature but but who we are as people and letting the nature sort of be a mirror for us and so i've been looking into this idea of a cultural biography a, a cultural biography is different than a regular bio if i was just to tell you like i'm sarah greenman and i went to college at mills college in oakland and i have a degree in creative writing and gender studies and i've worked in the nonprofit sector you've learned a few things about me but a cultural bio is going to give you a lot more information about where I come from, 
why I am like I am and what some of my um, foundational experiences are that brought me to this moment of now. And the creative alchemy cycle for me is a way of accessing some of that cultural bio as a way to become a more um, grounded and uh, ethically sound activist and artist. That's my reason for doing it. There are lots of reasons people do the creative alchemy cycle. But for me, I'm really interested in excavating buried stories. And so a cultural biography tells about a person's life and growth through rich cultural experiences and history. And it explores the subject's background through personal successes and passions and dreams as they are related to you know, their traditions and their culture. And they're always important to me as a storyteller, but they're always important to me as we build community. It's good to really know each other. <gasps> and I got this from Desiree Attaway Group. Uh, she talks about having a cultural bio as a very important part of understanding who we're working with when we want to, as Elizabeth say, collaborate. It's nice to know who our collaborators are and where we come from. So I'd like to share a poem by Mary Pfeiffer. Mary Pfeiffer wrote a beautiful book called Writing to Change the World. Where did and you go? I, I'm gonna put that in the chat here as well. So uh, the poem I'm gonna read is called I Am From by Mary Pfeiffer. And it's from her book, Writing to Change the World. I also like to add, if you don't have to write, it could be sketching to change the world or knitting to change the world or collaging to change the world. We all have our own like special modalities that we're a part of. So this is I Am From by Mary Pfeiffer. I am from Avis and Frank. Agnes and Fred, Glessy May and Mark, from the Ozark Mountains and the high plains of eastern Colorado, from mountain snowmelt and southern creeks with water moccasins. I am from oatmeal eaters, gizzard eaters, haggis and raccoon eaters. I'm from craziness, darkness, sensuality and humor, from intense do-gooders struggling through ranch winters in the 1920s. I am from, if you can't say anything nice about someone, don't say anything. And pretty is as pretty does, and shit muckety brown and damn it all to hell. I'm from no dancing or drinking Methodists, but cards were okay except on Sundays, and from tent meeting holy rollers. From farmers, soldiers, bootleggers, teachers, I am from Schwinn Girls Bike, 1950 Mercury Two Door and West Side Story. From Coyote, Baby Field Mice, Chlorinus swimming pools, Milky Way and Harvest Moon over Nebraska cornfields. I'm from Muddy Platte and Republican, from Cottonwood and Mulberry and Tumbleweeds and Switchgrass and Willa Cather and Walt Whitman and Janis Joplin. My own sweet dance unfolding against a cast of women in aprons and barefoot men in overalls. I really like this poem because you get a lot of information real fast about Mary Pfeiffer. And if you are working with her or if you know anything about her writing, you start to understand a little bit about why she, you know, what makes her tick, like what, what she comes from. And the other thing I love about it is that if I were to write my own poem like this, I know exactly my answers to all of her I am froms. We all do. We don't have to like dig or make anything up. Like I know who my parents are or I know who I was adopted by. I know like where the landscape I was when I was born and raised. And so I have all that information at my fingertips. So we're going to do kind of like a little Mad Libs. Anyone used to do Mad Libs when they were little and they just fill in the adjective, right? I love Mad Libs. And I love this too because it's permission to use somebody else's framework to create my own. And that is a beautiful thing. I'm a collaborative artist and so I like using other people's work. So you can sketch, you can doodle, you can uh, make pictures, you can write it out as it was in the poem, but we're gonna do some Mad Libs. I'm going to give you the first line and you can write in what works for you, who you were from, where you were from, what landscapes you were surrounded by uh, as a kid. So you're welcome to, again, write or doodle, whatever suits you, please. So the first line, I'm gonna put it in the chat here, is I am from, and then the names of your parents and grandparents or caregivers or aunts or uncles or anyone who raised you.
had to let my dog in. <laughs> Great. This should be generally quick. So she said she was from Glessy May and Frank from Avis. And you've got your people in there too now. Her next line was about a landscape. She said, I'm from the Ozark Mountains and the high plains of eastern Colorado, from mountain snowmelt, southern creeks with water moccasins. So yours will start similarly from whatever landscape that surrounded you and your youth. If it's me, it's Pacific Ocean and Manzanita and Red Rock. But we all have our own inner landscapes, places we were raised. And again, you can be doodling and sketching this as well. It doesn't have to be words. And go ahead and look up at me if you've got a few of those things down. Good deal, now we all know. So for the third line, she says she's from oatmeal eaters, gizzard eaters, haggis eaters. Gives me a good idea of her cultural background. So. Who are you from and what did they eat? Food that you or your parents or your ancestors consumed. I'm definitely from haggis eaters, although we also had mashed turnips when we had our haggis. So, <laughs> so food that you or your parents or your ancestors ate. It makes me want to rekindle my love of tater tot casserole. I come from Minnesota Methodists. So. <laughs> or lutefisk pie. That was the other one. Ugh, lutefisk. Ugh. <laughs> so once you've finished your foods, her next line, she has qualities or characteristics that came from her family that describe her ancestors. She said, I came from darkness, sensuality, craziness, and humor. Pick two or three or four characteristics that you would encapsulate your family or qualities that describe them or, or you. I always find that these are qualities I'm trying to um, get away from <laughs> sometimes. Now that you've got two or three words down for characteristics, I want you to think of a fam, um, where is it? Oh yeah, huh? a family characteristic that arose from a, a notable time in history. She writes that uh, they're intense do-gooders struggling through ranch winters in the 1920s. That was her description of her family, intense do-gooders struggling through ranch winters in the 1920s. Was there a time in history that really affected your family? Was it the Dust Bowl? Was it an immigration process? Was it a famine? Was it the clearances in Scotland or the pogroms in Poland? 
Was it a war? Yeah, Trisha. Oh, I just saw you put your hand up. <laughs> stop thinking. Oh, he's not thinking. Good deal. <laughs> so when you've um, put the little last sort of thought down about that, about a notable, notable time in history, the next one is um, sayings or phrases that you heard as a family or as a child. Uh, she wrote, I'm from, if you can't say nice about someone, don't say anything, or pretty is as pretty does, or uh, shit muckledy brown, or damn it all to hell. Those are the things that she brought forth. What did you hear in childhood that were passed down through your family? I am from, what sayings, what phrases? I often heard my mom say, don't you even think about it. For her next line, she says, I'm from no dancing or drinking Methodists, but cards were okay except on Sunday, and tent meeting holy rollers. Starting to get a real good picture of her religious background. So we all have religious affiliations or traditions, whether we are in a religion or not. Probably if you go back one or two generations in your own family, you're going to find some religious traditions or spiritual ones at least. Or maybe your spiritual tradition is that you broke with the church and your family is outlier or atheist. So I'm from what religious affiliations or traditions come to mind for you? In her next line, she says she's from farmers, soldiers, bootleggers, and teachers. Which occupations were held by your family members or by your ancestors?
in my family, we were day laborers. We worked farmland that was not our own and we did laundry that was not our own. And then we got real good at fighting fires in the West. <laughs> Which occupations did your family members hold? And this can be just a down and dirty list, <laughs> just like hers. Teachers, bootleggers, preachers. Then she starts naming pop culture stuff. She says, I'm from Schwinn's Girls Bike, a 1950 Mercury two-door, and West Side Story. What pop culture or mass-produced toys or movies or TV shows come to mind for you from your childhood? What are you from? I'm from All in the Family and the Jeffersons for sure. <laughs> and Barbie. Barbie was big. I also want to say if if doing this exercise is bringing up anything for you that's difficult because that could be real and true and brings it up for me sometimes it's okay to notice it you can write it into your poem or you don't have to but it's okay to let it wash over you a little bit and remember it's still there that little bit of hurt that little bit of grief or that lot of bit The beauty of having this framework is that it, it has a place to land. It's got a, a frame to be in for the moment to hold it. And you can allow it to hold it. But also if there's something that's hot to the touch that you don't want to think about or touch, you can just say, you know what? That's for another time. <laughs> it's too hot to handle. <laughs> I respect that a lot. It's okay to walk away. <laughs> In her next line, after Mercury Two Door and West Side Story, she says, I come from coyote, baby field mice, chlorinous swimming pools, Milky Way and harvest moon over Nebraska cornfields. So for us, we come from natural elements and animals that inhabited those spaces and childhood landscapes. What animals were around you? She has coyote and baby field mice and swimming pools and the stars, Milky Way, Nebraska cornfields. Which animals and landscapes were around you in your becoming?
After she talks about natural elements and animals around her, she says she's from Muddy Platt and Republican, a water source and a political source. So these are just two things. I want you to pick a river or a creek or a sea or a lake or a dry bottom creek or a mud puddle that was around you <laughs> when you were growing up. I come from a place called Atascadero, which I believe means mud hole. Lompoc. So, Lompoc. <laughs> Valley of the flowers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so pick a river or a water source. It need not be grand. Um, and a mess. <laughs> is San Inez, yeah, or a and a political affiliation if they had one. Democrat. Though. There you go. After you've written your water source and your political affiliation for your family. Now she says, I come from cottonwood, mulberry, tumbleweed and switchgrass from Willa Cather, Walt Whitman and Janice Joplin. So she's got all of these botanical elements and then writers, musicians, that she throws in there. I like that she puts those two together, certain types of trees and certain types of culture. <laughs> Cottonwood, mulberry, tumbleweed, switchgrass, Willa Cather, Walt Whitman, and Janis Joplin. Who are your trees and writers and songwriters? Then for her very last line, she gives us this beautiful structure to sort of complete our Mad Lib, which is my own sweet dance unfolding against a cast of women in aprons and barefoot men in overalls. Hers sounds like a pretty gendered world. So we can use that framework for our, our last line as well. My own something dance. Hers is a sweet dance unfolding against what what's in the background and you can use her women and men cast or you can use something entirely your own And when you have completed that last sentence, if you have, I know that we went quickly. <laughs> you might still be writing in other places on your poem, but just go ahead and look up at me when you're ready, when you're ready. That helps me know when you're finished. Oh, Jaron, good, you're back. I see you. <laughs> you 
You okay, Jaron? You're back? Sweet. <laughs> My friend Rowan White is an indigenous seed keeper and she speaks a lot about relationship, the web of relationship. And she says, no matter where you are on this earth, no matter your ideology or who your people are, you are held in a web of relationship. And this, this poem always reminds me that I'm held in a web of relationship that goes into the past and brings me into the future. And I really like feeling held in that way. If anyone feels moved or so called, I would love if you want to just look back over your poem. If there's something that just really resonated with you or stuck out to you, or if you'd like to share a few lines of your poem or a section of your I am from poem, this is a beautiful opportunity to share into the space. And I would encourage you if you're feeling like, ooh, sharing, that feels kind of vulnerable, <laughs> that um, this is how we build community, is being vulnerable with each other and sharing space like this. I can't promise that any space I ever hold is safe, but I can promise that it will be resilient and that we can hold a lot here. This is Joan from Iowa, um, Hi, land of the Sox, Sock and Fox. Yeah. She, her. Um, I, I just wanted to share with you my last uh, summary, which kind of helps me understand why sometimes I'm kind of screwed up. Uh, my own sweet dance, enfolding with no dance floor, church music, and women in the kitchen, men sitting at the table. <laughs> A dance with no dance floor. Yeah. <laughs> no dancing. No dancing. No dancing. <laughs> it's a very quiet, minimal dance. <laughs> oh, Joan, thank you so much for sharing that. That's lovely. Thank you. Callie, yes. Uh, my last line was my own herky jerky dance unfolding against expectations versus authenticity. Mm. I feel that. <laughs> Thank you, Callie. Yes, Rachel, please step on in. Hi, everyone. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm Rachel. I'm in Massachusetts. Um, I'll just read my last line. Um, my own solitary dance unfolding against generations of pretend. Thank you. Powerful. Thank you. Yes, Claudia, I see you. Well, I'm not going to read my last line. I'm Claudia. I'm in North Carolina. I'm going to read the, I'm from Don't Bleed on the Rug, and it doesn't need a Band-Aid. The fresh air will be good for it. And three bites rule, and uh, friends don't expect it, and enemies won't believe it. So. That's choice. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. Yes, Erin, please. I I was thrilled to just think about food. So okay, here's my my like. How could I possibly lift or write down everything that comes to mind? But I am from pierogi and guampki, green bean casseroles and ham, blessed Easter meals and sloppy joes, plates full of color and variety, and fruit for dessert. <laughs> fruit that makes it dessert. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Erin. <laughs> Thelma, yes, please. Hi. I am from gassing up on odd and even days in California during the energy crisis. Hostages coming home. I am from mom traveling up to LA to get extra per diem pay. I am from dad coming home from the sea. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Any other thoughts? We're here if you want to share. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, please. I'll share food. Food. I love food. Victoria, yes. 
Exactly. Masa suvada, apple pie, chicken necks, kale soup, popsicles, iced animal cookies, and liverwurst. <laughs> Thank you, Vicki. Awesome. So I want to share a quote with you. Uh, Safe a wall says, who do you free in your lineage when you tell your story? It also could be, who do you heal in your lineage when you tell your story? Now, if this was a much longer writing workshop, this is what we journal on next, but it isn't. So I'm leaving this with you as sort of a, you know, to take with you if this felt good and juicy and generative to you. Um, this quote, this, this question from Seifa is, um, I think, a really potent and beautiful question that leads in a lot of wonderful directions about how we turn our art into a pathway for social justice and for healing intergenerationally. I know that's a really big topic and that there's a lot there, but um, these are ones of, one of the kinds of ways that I take a really fun writing exercise and we sort of transition it, right? We, we convert it into um, asking some deeper questions about who we are and why we're here and how we can shift culture in our own environments and in, and in the ripple work about how that ripples away from us. And so this question really, I think, gets at the heart of that. Who do you free in your lineage when you share your story? And I'm a playwright at heart, I'm a storyteller, so I always am really uh, idealistic when it comes to what I think stories can do, but I really do think they can shift culture and heal us um, in a really big way. And so the creative alchemy cycle asks that we take a really slow and relational look at ourselves as we relate to nature. We are nature. We're a part of it. This uh, delusion that we're separate from it, I think, is one of, the, one of the ways in which we continue to cause harm. If we think we're separate from the earth, we can harm it. If we think we're separate from other people, we harm them. If we think we're separate from other types of people or types of um, animals or spaces, then we can separate their humanity and their, their inner divinity from themselves. And that's when harm and war <laughs> happens inside of us, in our relationships and in our world. And so the creative alchemy cycle is, was for me as a storyteller and writer, a way to shift how I think about my place in the world and stop intergenerational harm and disrupt it. And I don't think you can actually dismantle something unless you know how to make something. <laughs> so I'm really interested in making, making stories and making sweaters and making gardens. And, and so um, being creative is just my tool for how I get there. It's literally a combustible tool that I use to be in right relationship with the people around me and with my world. And so that's really where this, this framework of the creative alchemy cycle comes from. I mean, in its most basic form, the creative alchemy cycle is an engaged creative calendar that reminds me to return to the work. Uh, it comes out in eight bundles throughout the year. And so that is a nice six week spread, right? It doesn't feel too fast. It's not once a week, it's not once a month. It comes out every six to seven weeks and is really connected to the cycles of nature as I experienced them in my background, which is a Celtic background, an Irish and Scottish background. So I'm going to transition now and talk um, a little bit about the creative alchemy cycle. If you came for the writing workshop and you were like, I'm good, that's what I came for, I'll see you later. You are so welcome to depart now if you have other things you want to do. But in the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna show you a bundle, a virtual bundle. We're gonna open a care package and we'll have a little Q and A. So this is the sort of more relaxed part of the, part of the uh, gathering today. Um, and as you have questions, please just unmute yourself and just ask, because this is, um, I hope it's a conversation rather than me talking for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> Anyone need to leave? You're welcome to. Thank you so much for being here. If you do go, I will be in touch via email with all of the information that we just went over with all of my resources and music and poems and all that good jazz. So 
The Creed of Alchemy cycle. It, uh, we just finished a whole year of it. There are eight bundles and it was such a fun ride. I really loved building this. I mean, it was, it was just a fun ride. And I did it in real time with the people who participated with me. As I said, I'm a fellow traveler. I'm not the perfect vessel for this work and I'm not like the leader of the group. I'm definitely a field guide. <laughs> I sort of consider myself a field guide. <laughs> and the work that I have compiled is really a culmination of my life's work through the lens with which I see, which is one that is a, a natural one. I live in the largest unincorporated wilderness in the lower 48 states. So I have a lot of nature around me and it is the thing I interact with the most. So um, the Creative Alchemy Cycle is a great tool for those who are looking to have a little bit of accountability with a community who need a little reminder to re-engage with their creative practice, if it's off the rails a bit, it can be that simple, just a, a group to be with and to cycle with. It's a beautiful tool for those who love nature, but don't really have much of a relationship with her and are looking for ways to merge their creative practice with the, the natural rhythms of nature. I mean, I really, I send these gorgeous, like, they're so beautiful. These care packages come every uh, cycle. So you'll get eight of them throughout the year and they are stuffed with natural ephemera that I find out here on my walks and hikes. And then I hook all of those um, natural themes and objects up to a lot of the work we do in the cycle, whether it's creative writing exercises, whether it's painting. And as you follow the wheel of the year, you'll just go deeper and deeper into the practice if you want. You'll notice that it begins on one level and sort of goes deeper and deeper, just like I paint. I paint in layers. I do a big sort of splashy, colorful base, and then I get more and more specific as I layer on paint. And I do the same with stories. I free write and it's really loose, loosey goosey, not a lot of uh, rhyme or reason. And then I start editing and I, I teach and I share and I facilitate in the same way that I paint and that I write stories, which is in layers. So I have some people on the Creative Alchemy Cycle who just come for the, the care package. They love getting their box. It reminds them, oh yeah, now is the season where um, we're going into our shadow work and our shadow selves because it's Samhain and it's October and things are dying around me and we're starting to become dormant. And it's just a nice reminder. So that's a very, um, tangible immediate level that you'll receive the cycle and if you go to the digital page which i'll show you in a minute there are lots of ways to quickly engage and there are lots of ways to deeply engage and i really want to meet people where they're at i don't know about you but i'm not always ready to go deep all the time i'm like you know what my kids are a lot right now and i need to get groceries and I have a lot of irons in the fire. And so all I can do is listen to this podcast and get the, the bundle and do a little writing exercise and call it good. That's great. It's a perfect way to start. And the beauty of the creative alchemy cycle is there's always more if you want it. We also meet once a, uh, once a month uh, together like this for a one hour get together. And it's very seasonally focused and it's a little bit like what you just experienced in the last hour with me. So I would love to show you the um, summer solstice bundle. Are there any questions so far? Th yeah, Erin, please. Just a really quick question actually about timing of your monthly meetings. Do yeah. you uh, plan those for a specific time every month? I do, I try to do them on the fourth Sunday of every month at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And they're usually from 10 to 11 and I record them, except last month I forgot because I just got excited and I went with it and I didn't record it. So <laughs> sometimes. They don't get recorded, but they're usually recorded. They're one hour, 10 o'clock, fourth Sunday of every month. And I leave the room open for like 15 minutes to 20 minutes afterwards. So we can chat and hang out and see what we're all working on. And, you know, just have, I call it like a hallway conversations, right? Cool. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Absolutely. So I'm going to share my screen with the summer bundle. And I'm just going to give you as well the link. You can have it for free right now because you're here and I love you. Here, there's the link to the Summer Solstice Bundle. And I'm also going to screen share so you can see it in real time with me right here. Mm -hmm. 
Give me just a second as I figure out screen sharing. Why is this so hard? Oh, basic. There we go. So you should all be able to see my screen right now. Yeah. Can you see it? Thumbs up. Cool. So at the beginning of every single bundle, you're going to get a link. It's a link to a home page, and this is where we're going to spend all our time for the season. And everything you need is here. Everything. So summer solstice, you'll come right down. There's a little welcome note. It tells you a little bit about the season and what you'll find below. You'll also have a table of contents. I always have a story of the season, which I consider a homily. If this is ministerial work, then I'm definitely your celebrant. <laughs> so I like to have a homily at the beginning. They're about eight to 10 minutes long. And it's a story that I've written where I am practicing the creative alchemy cycle in real time with you, for you, alongside you. <laughs> and I share my work. Then we have a great wide open video and an in the studio video. These are two videos that I'll show you in just a moment. We also have a podcast and then I have a bunch of writing prompts, links, reading lists, Spotify playlists. Then we also have our monthly community Zoom call with recordings. And then for full subscribers who are subscribing through Patreon, I also have an online communication platform through Mighty Networks. It's off of Facebook, it's off of social media, so it's private and you don't get all the ads, you just get your people. And this is where people share their work or talk about the work they're doing. It's a really beautiful um, space that we're starting to learn how to use it now that we've been in, in it a year. And of course you also get the altar box. So the story of the season comes to you just like this. You get, uh, it comes as a SoundCloud file and you can listen there. And then we have our, our videos and I'll play you a little bit of this here. Not if you can hear this. For centuries, the Celtic people have celebrated the summer solstice with a grand bonfire. And we do the same out here in Eastern Oregon. At least I do. Sun worshippers, this is your moment. Summer solstice, called Litha on the Celtic calendar, marks the longest day of the year. But it's not just my bonfire that I've set ablaze. The sun is also doing its part beautiful sunsets reflecting on the Snake River, and nights that look like they could explode with pink and purple and deep orange. I've taken to the hills, as I usually do at this time of year. The snows are all melted and the wildflowers have done their best. And now we have this wonderful, complex, botanical, interlaced system that covers the mountains where I live. I have to step lightly out here because the plants are so close together and it's very rocky and I don't want to disturb their root systems. They're all linked together. I have friends who try to transplant some of these beautiful botanicals down into their own gardens, but they never make the journey. They don't know how to thrive alone. They need each other. They need the diversity and the complexity of the root system. I'm so that is just the very beginning of in the great wide open where I take you out into nature and we absorb the source material directly from the source. <laughs> and then I um, bring you back in to the studio and we talk about what we encountered and we make art. So here's a little piece of that. And I can't wait to share more about it with you in the future. This season, I want us to be thinking about what sets us on fire, what we want to burn down, and what we want to ignite, right? So um, I'm excited to do a few projects with you today. We're going to be working on um, just a really simple craft project, which every once in a while, instead of painting a big painting, I just want to doodle and make small little crafty things. So let's let that be our warm up today. I sent you all um, in your care packages some blank bookmarks. So we're going to make our own bookmarks for our summer reading. I hope you have some good summer reading. Look on our uh, reading list if you're interested in any of those titles or you're just like at a loss for what you want to be reading this summer. And then we're going to paint a triptych of a waning full and waxing moon. I'm really interested in working in series. Um, series? Series? <laughs> Siri? Anyway, I think it's important. So you get the idea. 
it's very me and i'm very honest and real with you about my process outside and inside take you outside and then i bring you inside i also have the collaborative alchemy podcast and all people on the creative alchemy cycle get first look and first access to these as they come out ahead of them being public so they're always connected to conversations we're having about what we're seeing in nature about what we're doing in the studio. And then I bring in other artists, other writers, other makers, doers, creators, farmers. And we talk about, um, oh gosh, all sorts of things, but they're always connected to what we're working on. And as you scroll down on your homepage, you're gonna find your, um, your playlists, which are fun and really connected to the seasonal themes. We have, PDFs, which are all of your writing prompts that we work with and reading lists and links. And listen, I have people who are like, I've never even opened the Spotify playlist. I don't even look at the reading list. I just am here for the awesome bundle and the videos and I do the art project and I call it good. So everyone really does interface with this in their own way. And then I always have a little bonus, which is something else that's happening or something else that I'm working on that I share with you. And for instance, this season, it was the beautiful and true podcast that I, I did with Jen Cox. So lots of stuff to do and look at and see and engage with. And then we have our um, Creative Alchemy community calls on the fourth Sunday of every month from 10 to 11, 15. And when they're done, I record them and I put them right here so people can come check it out later if they missed it. And then as you scroll down, you'll have links to our community gallery online. And you'll also have a picture of the care package I sent you with everything you need to know about it, the contents of the package, and then a lot about what's in there, like where I got it, why I put it in there, how we can use it, how you can build your own altars. And then I usually have a quote to finish us off with. So this is what an entire digital bundle looks like from the outset. And you get this about five, four to five days before the actual um, holiday itself. The holidays are the holidays are from the top of the year all the way through in bulk, which is a uh, lambing season festival in Ireland, and that's in February. The, uh, the equinox, the spring equinox in the spring, Beltane in uh, May, the summer solstice, then it comes out again at Lunasa, which is the holiday we're in right now, which is a harvest festival. Then Maybon, which is the, um, the autumn equinox in September, and then Samhain, which is sort of our Halloween in October, and Yule, which is the winter solstice. So those are the eight holidays throughout the year. And I'm going to go ahead. Of course, course, say that again. Oh, whoops! Actually, sorry. Oh, that's okay, okay Tricia. <laughs> Any questions about what you just saw in terms of the digital bundle? Cool. So I have this um, box. I'm going to open it here with you. Hopefully you can kind of see a little bit inside it. So this is the Beltane bundle. It comes with uh, this all in this little box as you open it. And you can pin this if you want to see this closer up. Actually, you can I can pin it too for the video that we're going to share. Um, let's see if I can move this. There we go. That maybe works a little better. I'm not really a camera woman, but you know, we work things out. <laughs> so inside the Beltane uh, bundle, you have your table of contents. This is what you're going to find in your package every season. For the Beltane bundle this year, I actually shared a print, a five by five print of my hey, own. Sarah, yes. we're just seeing you. We're not seeing the bundle. Oh, shoot. Gosh darn it. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'll go back to gallery view. I was trying to be fancy and it didn't work. Okay. So you've got your um, Beltane welcome with the table contents. I had a five by five print that I included in each of the boxes. Usually I send some kind of art ephemera from the studio. It's either a print or a, I've sent original work as well. Um, in Beltane, we had a lot of information about honey and bees and creative pollination. So I, um, I got all of this honey from a local honey person here who we get all of our honey from and she helped me make 
a bunch of little jars and I sent that to everybody. So they all got honey from halfway where I live. Let's see. And it also came with a, um, a honey wand. Have you ever seen those, right? They're like little honey wands. Also, gosh, it's been a long time since I've looked in this bundle. Oh yeah. <laughs> I also had um, a candle, a really large uh, tea light that came with it for your altar. And then of course, every bundle comes with a welcome letter. And I can't remember if I put something in here. Oh yeah, I did. And also I had, um, I'll share these with you if we can see them. A bunch of uh, pressed flowers from my garden that season. So the Beltane bundle, which was all about creative pollination and um, sensuality and uh, waking up to our physical body, I sent honey, which is so sweet and delectable from my local area and uh, bee imagery and a candle for your altar and flowers to put on your altar. And it was just a really fun way to, to kick off the season. So that comes with every single bundle as well. You usually get, I try to time them so that the bundle shows up the digital bundle shows up right after you get your package. So it's all in your hands at the right time. Thanks, Gretchen. Beautiful bundle. They're all different. It depends on the season. It really does depend on what's happening. So um, if you go to the Creative Alchemy uh, Cycle page, you'll see lots of examples of bundles that I've put on there. I would love to open it up to questions. And I'd like to answer two questions that came in ahead of time. One of you asked, um, I'm a procrastinator. How do I not procrastinate? <laughs> I love, I too am a um, Olympic procrastinator. Uh, <laughs> and it's part of my beingness. And I love the creative alchemy cycle because it, it makes space for me to procrastinate. <laughs> It's like I built it in uh, for myself, uh, meaning that it doesn't have to happen all at once and it is there for you when you need it. And I, as your guide, come back in and remind. <laughs> we have our little like moment where I land the bundle with you and I'm like, hey, here it is. Here you go. I'll see you in a week. And then in a week, the holiday happens and I reach back out to you and I say, hey, the holiday is today. You know, here's a way you could engage with your your package. So you have an accountability partner in me that helps remind you gently to engage with the work. And then of course we have our monthly meeting, which is so fun. And a lot of people say, you know, I don't do it until I'm with you. I don't do it unless I'm in a kind of a, a held container or a classroom like place. And so they only do the month and that's, that's fine too. That's the way they work. So um, in terms of procrastinating, I actually think creative procrastination has a place. <laughs> but if you haven't done it for months and months and months, then, you know, clearly just like me, you are dipping into a, a level of avoidance. <laughs> and so the creative alchemy cycle is my way of um, mindfully not avoiding the thing that I love most in this world, which is creating things and, and being in community, being in creative community. Another question that came in was, what if I don't like it and I'm done with it after three or four months? This is through Patreon. And I want to say Patreon for me is a way I, I get an income from my work. And you're there because we are in relationship. You're supporting my work as an artist. It's $45 a month for the Creative Alchemy Cycle. If that's something that is not doable for you, come talk to me because there are lots of levels at which you can engage. Nobody is turned away for lack of funds. That is just my way of being in the world because I am the person that's usually lacking funds. So I love being able to engage with other people's work when there are equitable ways to, to get in. And you can always cancel. Any month you're like, I'm done. You can just say, Sarah, thanks so much, but I'm out. And you can cancel at any time. So really you get to decide how in you are. <laughs> it's really um, there so that you and I are in a relationship, which involves me sharing my work and inviting you into a creative practice that's good for you and generative for you. And most of the time there is a financial interaction that happens on Patreon that keeps us in relationship so that the remuneration works but it really gets to be dictated by us. So you can go and come at any time. Other questions that you have that have come up for you as you've listened through the last 20 minutes or so and seen what the package is.
Any thoughts? We also have a few um, people who are on the cycle with us here. Thelma and Claudia and Vicky are here with us and Elizabeth, uh, all four of them are participants currently on the cycle. And so they um, are here to answer any questions as well, if I may offer you all. <laughs> uh, if you wanna know what the experience is like, not from the guide, but from somebody who is a fellow traveler. I love that it's there forever because I really like the Ostera bundle mm. and Sarah's a rule breaker. So like I moved to the next season and I'm like, mm, now nah, I'm going to stay in Ostera. <laughs> like I really like the Spotify list and I listen to them as I write. So I'm like, okay, I'm still going to listen to the water songs. I love it. And you too are a rule breaker, which I love about you, Thelma. And you're like, no, I'm, I'm good right here. <laughs> That's awesome. They are forever and always available to you. Once you have the link, that link will always be there. Always. I went ahead and put a link to the Creative Alchemy Cycle page in there if you want to look at more of the bundles. If you want to take a look at... Um, more of my reasoning for building the creative alchemy cycle that's there as well. But please do also I'm when I send my follow up email uh, today I'm going to send you the link to the Litha bundle and if you like please feel free to look at all the videos listen to the podcast listen to the you know the whole thing it's all yours to just explore and enjoy. When does the new cycle begin, so this is an evergreen offering. It's a cycle. I love being in a, a wheel of the year because it means I never have missed anything. I can always wait for it to come around the next year. <laughs> or I also can, as Thelma does, go find my place on the, the wheel where I feel most comfy and kind of land there. But uh, we're beginning again in September. So if you would like to join us in this next round, uh, September 1st is a great time to join. The way Patreon works, if you join now, you'll pay 30 for August or sorry, you'll pay 45 for August, and then you'll also pay it again in September. It's once a month. So if you'd like to wait until September, you're welcome to. But if you're like, I love Sarah and I love her work and I just want to support her now, you can become a patron right now. It's totally up to you. But I will be sending out your first bundle around the 11th of September so that it arrives the 15th or 16th of September, and then you are going to get your bundle also on the 15th of September, the digital bundle, so that you'll be ready for the autumn equinox on the 21st of September, which is our first mm. holiday we're celebrating. So mm. I would love if you do want to join us for you to please join us before September 10th, I would say is like my outset. That way it gives me a sense of um, where all the packages are going. As you can imagine, I spend a lot of time building the bundle and building the altar boxes that I send to you. So if I had a rush right at the end of 10 or 11 boxes, it might be a little tight, but <laughs> uh, I will also take latecomers because I am usually the latecomer. <laughs> I have a question, Sarah. Yes, Kelly. Uh, uh, I'm a Patreon at a lesser amount right now. Yes. When I sign up for this, will it change my Patreon amount or add it to? Um, so you'll go to patreon.com backslash pledges and i can send this to you as well callie okay. and that's where you'll see me he'll say you're supporting sarah at you know x dollars a month and mm -hmm. it'll ask you if you want to change the level or your 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 patronage and okay. so you can do that there and you can Yay. just click oh i want to be a creative alchemist and it'll move you to the 45 dollar a month or you can contact me if you need an, a different situation yeah. and we'll figure that it out. link will be fine Perfect. and uh what was I going to say? So September the 1st is a good time to join that. September 1st is a great time to join. And I am going to send you all an email on the 1st and say, hey, today's the day. Here's a little bit more about the cycle. If you're still thinking about it, now's Yay. a good time to join. So I will, um, as in all things, I will remind you. <laughs> <laughs> I need reminders. <laughs> Other questions or thoughts or things that have come up for you today that you want to address or know more about. I hope you do enjoy um, just looking through the, the Litha page. I will send this all to you in the next 30 minutes. So it'll all come to you just beautifully. I, I'm kind of a an organized 
brain, I really like organizing my things. And so you'll find that um, most things I send you are generally easy to navigate. <laughs> if you ever have a question about something you get from me and you're like, where's the web page or what is this? Please reach out. I would love to help us all navigate things so we know where things are. Yes, Erin. Quick. Um, so I, when you were going through um, discussing what the process was like for us monthly, I, you mentioned that there are two different levels, right? So there's like a first level and then like the full level of the subscription. So you have the ability to subscribe to like, if I, um, for whatever reason, opted to not get um, <clears throat> access to the community and the bundle, I can still um, be on the monthly call and do all of that from yep. level one, right? Thank you, Mabel. Thank you everyone who's heading out. Um, yes, Erin, the short okay. answer is absolutely. Um, these can also be sent out as a la carte bundles, which means you just get the digital content. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. And I'll describe that in my email too, so you can make choices. Um, thank you so much for all of you who have joined us today and are heading out. It's really nice to meet you and be um, in real time with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you.